somebody who speaks the truth or tries to get people to reality, they they go into kill mode. <laughs> Not just that, there's schizoids that are psychotic and they go straight into kill mode. They don't want their wounded healer exposed. They don't want to deal with the truth. This this sector of mental health <laughs> support groups is cancer. It's like where can you go with this? Granted, the median group revisiting the book. <laughs> Their version of, of differentiation is through the middle group. <laughs> Small groups are going to keep repetition and compulsion going. It's only through dialogue and having multiple voices and acting out and talking out diverse voices having the group hold the space for multiple perspectives, that's the way to have a adult identity. Mm -hmm. But this format of a uh, teacher, student, parasocial expert to followers, that's small group, that's guru, that's cult, that's repetition compulsion. It encourages weakness which I might despise. So that's, <laughs> so I have to like bite my tongue <laughs> and squash my soul when I see weakness being enabled. When I not only see weakness being enabled, I see people actively being entitled to continue weakness, to continue hiding, to continue whatever bullshit, fantasy shell, shell game bullshit. It, it hurts. <laughs> Where is the passion in this mental health space? There's a conflict aversion, a lot of passion around that. <laughs> There's this entitlement of being happy and comfortable and whatever airy fairy nonsense, but that's not passion. I mean, that, that, that is, I, <laughs> why I don't know, bother? don't they patholo don't they pathologize too much enthusiasm like that or too. Just any enthusiasm. That's even more soul crushing. They're pathologizing enthusiasm. Yeah, there's a term. It's Hypomania. Like, they're pathologizing real mania. mania. Like what? <laughs> well, full blown mania, mania. Yes, where full blown mania, where you're psychotic, psychotic and you're not seeing reality. That's because you're out of reality. But right. shouldn't? Isn't there a way to have more life in reality? Shouldn't? Couldn't? Shouldn't that be on the table? Not everyone has to do it, but. Shouldn't that be allowed? Yeah, no, it's hypomania. And it's... Yeah. <laughs> Isn't part of that goal of getting a taste of heaven on earth? I mean, <sighs> why would you be satisfied with just being happy? Fuck that shit. <laughs> really? All you want is be happy and have stuff and go to places and have a fucking lifestyle? Fuck that's people find that satisfying <laughs> no i don't <laughs> this mental health space feels like is just going nowhere <laughs> flip it or i'm just Spinning. <laughs> what else is there to explore i mean it's like I, it's partially a false a false leader that more understanding and better framing more truth is going to make a difference. If people don't have the passion, if people aren't willing to face whatever they're willing to face, the rest of the stuff isn't really going to do that much. Or maybe there's a, there's a sense there's some intangible that's out there. And maybe seeing Granin's fall of, from fantasy or fall into fantasy and psychosis means intangible might be closer i don't know seems like it's far away my formula if i were to find something like that is if i could have a relationship where both parties are growing and then as a byproduct the relationship is growing and through that getting to know each other more constantly because we're both growing and the relationship is growing, then that keeps it fresh. 
so they have the cognitive flexibility for each other. Well, if you're able to grow, that means you're cognitively flexible. Mm. My ex wouldn't have to define the relationship, so she would want me to fit her projection based on her past relationships. So I had to do everything she liked from her exes. Then I did do not do everything she disliked. And she didn't map it out for me. Because she didn't know. <laughs> that was her sort of projection. <laughs> hmm. Fun trail and error. And then that's putting my personal growth second and is putting her personal growth second into this idealized prison of a relationship expectation that's backwards based. And then we're looking to wounded healers like Richard Grannon and other people who, a little bit of conflict, they run away. <laughs> Or they fall the for relationships with people that are batshit crazy that tell him that they see a totally different person and he stays with her. <laughs> or crazy women that intentionally try to drive him crazy and d and tell him <laughs> and own it. What kind of relationship picker does he have? Then he makes a video about it. And the followers still worship him. That <laughs> yeah. speaks some to credibility. Yeah. Wow. This is his own worst enemy. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. People want fantasy. People want psychosis. People want to be lied to. Uh, painful. And in this mental health space, I make a discovery. And when I'm, when I land, when I get it right, crickets chirp. <laughs> yeah. hmm. So imagine you're an explorer and then finally you got it. And in your intuition, in your gut, you've got it. You landed it. <laughs> you found new territory. You discovered stuff. And then you share it with the mental health space and everybody sees it as a threat and or doesn't see it and just rejects it and that's your celebration. Yeah, not very satisfying for sure. I mean, I've complained about this. Uh, I've shared success stories and then when success stories from the group happen and rest, no one cares. Codependence, you don't even can't even be happy for other people's successes. <laughs> other people's successes are threatening yeah. to you <laughs> or something. I'm not sure. I don't understand it. Oh. Just in general, not individual. I mean, okay. Yeah. It's like, oh, what the hell? <laughs> Went right there. <laughs> uh, Sorry don't take that. it personal. It's just I know, shy. I know. I was like, <laughs> I was trying to rack my brain because I don't, yeah, I don't remember what that did well, I do? but no, nah, it was it's more about direct. you. I this forgot something? more about the space. <laughs> yes, yes, I understand. Uh, it's about the space and whether that has a, a spark domino effect. Right. Because part of being an explorer is that I can, I'm trying to create flow states. So part of a flow state is creating the right combinations. To have something that has its own momentum. Mm -hmm. And in the success domain of other domains and business and other stuff, success and improvements creates enthusiasm. And it creates enthusiasm that has its own momentum. That's how business startups work. That's how um, yeah. it's excitement works. That's how football games work. That's how other domains work. But in this mental health space, it seems like it's that doesn't work or there's something in the way. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. In music, contagion happens, everyone gets into that. In here, contagion happens is like just anxiety and everyone, the contagion is everyone just hides in neurotic nonsense. 
the pervasive like uh, victimhood or that that shame slime <laughs> has some energy that's keeping this natural enthusiasm and yeah enthusiasm libido life force yeah. this is mm -hmm. natural it should be it should work in mental health too actually it should be the basis of mental health <laughs> yes <laughs> Well, I think that's why there is a lot of a lot of crossover between uh, the spiritual, like. Uh, yes, spirituality yeah. should have this too, but you got all this avoidance stuff of let your thoughts go and just be whatever. Well, yes, yeah, mostly. That's what I like about Rupert Spira. He really, do, I know, I, like he's not perfect, but he he really does. His his primary teaching is to follow the enthusiasm. I like that. That's great. It's really great. Like, I find... <laughs> yeah, isn't That's like enthusiasm, like God within or some definition? Yeah, it's the golden thread to God a, within. Like God, enthusiasm yeah. is your internal thread. Yeah. And where's the enthusiasm in philosophy, mental health, spirituality? Where's the childlike joy it's even in the bible where is this spontaneous enthusiasm why do you, why 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 is it the opposite <laughs> but math for sure there's a lot in 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 computer sciences and in in, in um, like research and stuff there's lots of enthusiasm there oh this was a complaint when i do like car repairs <sighs> I can analyze a problem. I can try different fixes. And when the fix is done, there's obvious results. Mm -hmm. And there's natural satisfaction that a job is done. It's tangible. Concrete. And mental health is like always fleeting <laughs> so it sounds so. like ye because i was just thinking about those fields like fields research and, and so on and even automotive repair but it's like it's the enthusiasm seems to be especially say concentrated potent um um yeah uh in, in voluminous or whatever in in um at the edges. So when you're mining away at new stuff in the fringes, when you're, when you uncover, um, yeah, novelty. And, um, but that's what you're doing with this, in this space, Steve. But it sounds like mm, having it recognized, like officially recognized, is is a contingency for you in order to um receive or well recognition is one thing but having it ha having not having the opposite reaction <laughs> <laughs> so understanding the median group and actually not reading the book and then reflecting the the <laughs> reflecting the principles in the meeting about scapegoating that's validated in the book and then i have all of those fucking idiots <laughs> gaslight me the opposite who are who work with the god <laughs> it's discouraging yeah it's ultra it's 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 extremely discouraging <laughs> To have the psychosis from the outside instead of from the inside, this is like, really, <laughs> what the fuck is happening? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, shakes foundation a bit, yeah. Like the others are more fragile, but she, she's just, she's, she's more like, yeah, she's, yeah. she's she has a good idea. narcissistic defense, so she's self-serving. Maybe the whole group is self-serving. For sure. 
Well, maybe, yeah, yeah, that's sort of the same depressive realization I got from hospice volunteers. <laughs> mm. Or not just hospice volunteers. The whole industry of hospice is full of self-serving <laughs> parasites in general. Mm. <laughs> Mystery vultures. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. maybe that's part of my weakness I have <laughs> some wiring to look for a community of some sort of pure hearted something I'm not sure oh. probably my delusion I share it I that that's my that's my biggest ouch point I think in in yeah, I think I, I think I really resonate with that. Um, I mean, I made a list in uh, my late twenties of ideal qualities, and I think one of them was something like uh, transparent. <laughs> <laughs> then my girlfriend took that and was trying to copy it. <laughs> uh, you gave her the cheat sheet. <laughs> I gave you the cheat sheet too. Well, sure. I'm transparent. I want transparency. I love transparency. I know. <laughs> well, that might be it. So much of mental health is about hiding. Yeah. Maybe I have some wiring in me that can't find hiding satisfying and I don't really get people that enjoy hiding or add layers and layers and layers of happiness and other artificial words to make hiding the joy and peaceful and whatever else people do. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Oh, this is an offshoot of uh, last Saturday's theme, <laughs> partially. So I merge with the flow, and part of that third pointer from Miss LX was that uh, your pain leads to your purpose, and your purpose, ideal pain for your purpose is redemptive pain. So if mental health is about avoiding pain, then you're purposeless. <laughs> so you have to find something that hurts in your core that motivates you. Mm -hmm. That's something worth living. If it's just pleasure, happiness, that's essentially lack of pain. <laughs> That's not going to take you through any suffering. That's only going to go so far. I even made some memes. What is the purpose in my current pain? What is the purpose in my current pain? How is this going to make me a better person in the future? A better person in the future? How is what is this teaching me about relationships? What is this teaching me about myself? What is this teaching me about relationships? What is this teaching me about myself? Share that in person and then people are looking at their cell phones. <laughs> oh, they're just here for social. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Managing their state. Well, I'm not sure. Mm. Maybe mental health is trying to create neurotic people that are addicted to therapists, <laughs> are addicted to the space. The space has gotten big enough that it's creating its own survival parasitic uh, codependent relationship 
when someone has a super ego defense and it becomes a pathology, the super ego will kill anything to stay in power. Because the super ego has uh, rejected your true self, it's rejected your destructive side, or it's taken it over. So you have an unintegrated killer instinct, uh, death drive. You've rejected it, gone into your shadow, then your super ego has taken that <laughs> as the the whip, as the sadistic side. So exposing the super ego to containment failure means that whoever is the trigger is the target of murder. <laughs> Hmm. That's <laughs> and if you have professional super ego power lords, overlords, therapists, that means their super ego have even more murderous drive. Not uncommon. Or wounded what? healers might also have an overlord archon super ego that has a death wish type of energy. And they're drawn to that field. Oof. Well, that's the mind fuck of the field. Exactly. Yeah. Right? Holy right. shit. <laughs> oh. Problem. Ugh. It's Aww. a huge problem, you would think. The wounded side of the healer has this masochistic dark side that if you trigger the wrong side of it, you're the perceived reality opener or evoking shame in them. They have no conscience. They will yeah. go for your throat. That's yes. probably super common. And you saw... Deef, you, you you mentioned some sort of dust up, even with Rupert Spira, just to bring it, you know. Um, yeah, he, it, once in a blue moon, his will be triggered. It's true. Even just recently, uh, a friend of mine at one of his retreats. Um, Saw that. Yeah. And was yeah. confused by it and dis, like, dis, deeply disturbed. And even he was disgusted, but he, he wasn't ready to own that yet like to, to really because he's still clinging to he's an he's an ex-mormon my friend and he's really lost and spinning now without without that anchoring um that he'd been born into um and uh so he's kind of sealed on to rupert spira and um so anyway but yeah he witnessed some of that and uh, I mean, it's disturbing in the spiritual community. Uh, my last uh, in-person non-duality meeting was with Ben Ben Bentijo Masaro. So pretty. And it was like maybe the last couple of weeks before my dad died, but <laughs> he was still in the uprise, and everyone was like you know, his Shakti blast or something. Everyone was all of that, but he gave. He was giving his like, oh, just every two to three minutes, just to stop labeling and just do that. This sort of gimmicky, uh, fix. <laughs> and then I think I just asked a question like, uh, how much have you tested this? How much would it work under stress? And as an example, Ram Das, when he had his stroke, all of his practices failed. <laughs> And he had to regress to the love of his guru. So then I just threw that out to Ben Hijo. And he had no problem with that question. He just said, I haven't tested it. And he didn't care. <laughs> but the look of the rest of the people in the room staring at me with deaf eyes. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Was telling. Because those people wanted the fantasy that he was giving, the illusion, and my question, which he didn't mind, didn't shatter him, 
was threatening to the group. Which makes sense because they're going to be more fragile. That's why they want to be followers. And he's like the, he's probably a very grandiose yeah. person who is quite, yeah. imper- I mean, Donald Trump is pretty impervious to, I mean, again, Donald Trump, you know, um, Robin, <laughs> these impervious ones, right? Like egocentric, like they just, yeah. Maybe mental health is trying to create neurotic people that are addicted to therapists, <laughs> are addicted to the space. The space has gotten big enough that it's creating its own survival parasitic uh, codependent relationship. 